I think getting a sense for a character can be one of the most helpful ways to figure out the rules of their power set, especially in JoJo's where how someone acts is often how the implementation of and mechanics behind their stand are conveyed. And on a larger scale, the trends between characters and their stands can reveal formulas for the overall system. So Fugo's a pretty clear example, because I think he has a fairly understandable point of view when he deviates from the main perspective's side. And Purple Haze is great for highlighting what the rules of stands are, because it's mostly a conventional stand with a very specific difference. From what we saw, it seems Fugo was rational enough for Bucciarati to treat as an equal for his insight and judgment and be a team strategist, but lacked self-confidence and cared about the well-being of random youth, matching how Bruno could be a caring person while still going along with Passione's activities. But unlike Bruno, Fugo was never let in on Giorno's plan until the last minute, and due to his established lack of self-confidence, he wouldn't have been sure of whether he could survive himself or even contribute to the team. One general trend for stands, and backed by layers of reasons in the storytelling, is that they reflect people's fighting spirits and their reliable approaches to solving problems. People who can adapt to any scenario get these sort of replicas of themselves, that move around outside of their body and punch things for them. But they're also given abilities based on their specific strengths for solving problems. And if they're too reliant on one, the abilities can be what the stands are formed around entirely. Seko and Gyaccio were introduced in the same part, and have stands that are suits they wear around their bodies. Because of what stands are generally supposed to be, and how these two act when they fight, suit stands seem to be given to people who lean into their aggression, which fits some of the character tropes of the part setting in general fiction too. Fugo, on the other hand, just has outbursts when he's pushed into a corner, and his stand is the conventional type, just with the ability matching the way he gets aggressive. So if his wildness isn't something he tries to rely on, but a very effective behavior for better or worse, it would line up if he's the type of person who can solve problems really well when there isn't much pressure, but always wants more time to think when there is, and only ever gets stuff done in a pinch when he's pushed to a breaking point. Fugo's stand would confirm that his only contributions could be away from a crisis or at the cost of everyone around him. So Bruno would have hidden the dilemma until his only offer was to wander in enemy territory without a solid plan while giving the boss time to assemble a larger workforce, and it was too late to have any room to think knowing this is how Fugo operates. As a strategist, even if he did plan to help Bruno, Fugo would have chosen the most likely approach to work that they could achieve with the information they had, as opposed to risking it all on winning the lottery, which would mean that instead of grouping everyone together and boarding a boat for the hope of a miracle, playing the role of a fallback and looking for any new perspective within Passione that Bruno would no longer have access to. But having to leave his teammates defenseless under the branding of traitors would have still torn Fugo up. And even if he wasn't even considering still looking out for Bruno, since he was unconfident and also didn't have any time to think in the moment, his reaction would still line up with how he seemed to process things, as in it would make sense for how someone with his character traits in that scenario would make that choice without betraying anything about themselves. I think cowardly is what people call a rationale thing, where you're too afraid to commit to something so you abandon your values for fear. Because on the other hand, characters make safe choices all the time and don't directly charge into extra dangers as part of their strategies. Giorno doing missions for the boss before taking him down, Bruno choosing a battle of attrition, and Jotaro holding holding off on time stop as long as possible because there are enemies waiting to gang up on him if he uses it early are examples. Jotaro was even away from his family because he was a man of the sea and had to keep his distance so he could protect their lives from a world of those resentful psychics. So in the same way, abandoning your friends or values would be based on the rationale behind the decision, and dragging your friends into something would be closer to abandoning them if you know it screws them over. So even if Fugo was genuinely overwhelmed in the moment and planned on cutting ties with the team, it it would have been an understandable result of his specific attributes and weaknesses that we've seen, just not being suited well for that specific type of moment. I could totally imagine a scenario though, where if Diavolo had been slightly more confident in the empire he'd built up, he could have ordered Chocolata to also stall the group in a worst case scenario, and taken a step back himself to trace the causes that led to the team resisting him. If he returned to Naples, he could have remembered Polpo's arrow and gone back to the prison to get it out of storage, now at night with nobody around outside, and playing into the theme of being
being above other people, Diavolo could have received his own power-up like Bites the Dust, just more fluidly, and by intensely pressing the arrow pieces into his stance face while in thought. Then, those steps back to use his exclusive point of view as the sole passion boss could have opened up a weakness, because Fugo could have initially been given distancing orders back to Naples, and kept hope to now confront the boss in an isolated area. Then he would die or be imprisoned like the plant appraiser toward the end of Jojolian or something, but it would have stayed true to the overall ideas in the story. And at least for me, it feels like something Fugo's character totally could have done. I did also want an excuse to think of a potential King Crimson power, but that ended up not being necessary for the example. That being said, the reason I've been making these videos has been to lay down speculation for what the rules in the series could be, because then the guesses could be refined further, or trends between them could highlight other possible explanations. I think the easier it is to read into a character, the more scenes with that character can be used to read into the rest of the series, and reach the next step toward revealing the highest formula. So also, I think designing hypothetical content can be a good way of gauging whatever models you have, which was my motivation behind making my overly specific guesses for the end of part 8 and part 9, and why I don't like actually trying to predict stuff. I may have also, at a friend's request, tried to design Bites the Dust type power-ups and requiems for over 50 stands, but I was doing it to get a better sense of the characters and the overall rules for stands, and I do think it helped. Most of this is just because I personally like to learn the rules of the setting of a story I engage with. I spend a lot of time on it, but it's not necessarily something I'm good at or that there's a real-world benefit for. I caught this scene of the Roadrunner cartoon as a kid, and thought that if they're making cartoon exaggerations of certain concepts, then by learning how Roadrunner chooses to exaggerate things, I could maybe learn one or two details about something without having to interact with it myself. Just watching a segment of the Roadrunner wouldn't tell you how anything works, but it can be a step in one of several directions depending on what you make of it. That's how I've approached fiction since, and my main deciding factor for watching something is how much of a real-world benefit I see it having. But doing that really depends on what you think you can get out of it. For me, JoJo's has always had a lot that's relevant, and that's why I'd look into things like character formulas, story structure, and power systems for the chance of uncovering another thematic detail the series was trying to say. But if you're just trying to enjoy something, I don't think it's necessary to go into that much of the structure or formulas behind it. My, um, videos are going to be focused on that, going over any kinds of details that have patterns tracing back to core formulas, or the mechanisms in other series that clarify the shared root systems with this one. So keep that in mind if that's not what you're interested in.